So back to Hussein, uh, you probably know as much as anyone about the treatment of melanoma brain metastases. A at this ASCO, we'll be hearing about uh, an update on the uh, Australian report from, um, I guess, from Georgina. It's recently published. Uh, you've certainly seen lots of data from the Checkmate 204 study. So how has that changed practice? I mean, how have those data impacted on how you treat the patients and has it impacted in the community? Yeah, no, th that's, that's a great question. So um, I, I actually can add to the three R's of uh, uh, Michael uh, uh, in terms of the choice of epinevo, maybe a B for brain metastases, because you know I think the data is now quite uh, consistent across multiple trials that uh, the use of single agent PD-1 gives you a response rate. It's safe and it gives you a response rate in the brain, but it's in the order of about 20% as opposed to extracranial disease where you can get 35 to 40%, whereas for ipinevo as a combination, uh, again, first it's safe, so we don't induce as many in increased brain edema and concerns that you, you may have, you may actually worsen your patient's neurologic condition. So we've um, established that it's been safe now with you know a couple of hundred patients that have been treated across multiple trials. But the most important aspect is that the response rate is actually maintained. So you get a response rate of a 55 to 58 percent, which is consistent with extracranial disease, and those responses are actually durable. Uh, and some of them are complete responses, which is, again, very important because for this population, if those patients don't have disease in the brain anymore, you do not need to radiate, you do not need to operate with all of the neurologic deficits that that can come with. So we do believe that that is practice changing because we've been generally delaying the start of immunotherapy for patients with brain metastases until the brain is controlled with radiation or you know, SRS or even surgery. Uh, I should add that also BRF-targeted therapy has shown activity in the brain as well. So for BRF-mutated patients, that is an option. Uh, the response rates there are also somewhat comparable, about 58%. The main difference for those is that the responses are actually less durable than extracranial responses, and the PFS is uh, more limited to around five months. So in the way we stagger our approach is if you're a brain metastasis patient, I don't ask if you're BRF mutated or not, if I feel that it's safe to start you on epinevo. That would be usually the first choice. Uh, if you progress through that or if you can't tolerate treatment or have other reasons not to start epinevo, then we would consider BRF-targeted therapy for BRF mutant patients. Does that upset your neurosurgical colleagues who do the stereotactic radiosurgery? Well, that's, that's actually a great question. It, in fact, they've been very excited about these uh, results, and we've actually uh, developed a multidisciplinary approach around this where every patient with brain metastases is actually discussed in a brain metastases tumor board where we actually stack our approaches, approaches and say, you know, which would be the best first thing to start with? And, you know, sometimes it's me that rules them out and say, let's go with immunotherapy first. And I think this data that's now corroborated between our study in the U.S. with Checkmate 204, again, uh, Dr. Long's study in Australia, I think it, it really kind of uh, gives credence to this approach. And I think our neurosurgical colleagues and radiation oncologists are uh, on board with that or get, getting on board at least.